hello good day viewers in this tutorial we are going to be using this diagram to drive so many trigonometric identities you know when it comes to trigonometry right angle triangle is very much essential so if you're new here consider subscribing press the bell icon so that you will be notified whenever i upload a new content and don't forget to share to your learning colleagues now let us label the diagram so what you're seeing here is a right angle triangle enclosed in a rectangle and you know a rectangle has all these vertices to be equal to 90 degrees but one of the vertex of this right angle triangle lies on a right angle of this rectangle so now let us level this place as a b if this is a this is b we can write this one in terms of 90 degrees and it can be obtained by taking away a plus b from 90 degrees so this is 90 degrees minus the sum of A and B. Let the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle be one unit. Um, you know, this is a rectangle. The interior angle sum up to 180. We have 90 here. Uh, if you subtract that from 180, you get 90. This means that this angle plus this angle will give us 90. What does this imply? It implies that this angle will be A plus B. Because A plus B plus negative A plus B will give us 0 and we have 90 degrees plus 90 equal to 180. Let's move on. This is already 90 degrees. This plus this will be equal to 90. So this will be 90 degrees minus A. This is another 90, you know angle on the straight line is 180 we already have 90 here what is left is 90 so this angle plus this angle will give us 90 degrees therefore this angle right here must be equal to a we have another 90 here therefore this and this must be 90 as well so we have 90 minus a now let us go ahead and find the corresponding sides but remember this sine of an angle is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse but if you are looking for the opposite you can multiply the sine theta with the hypotenuse so opposite will be equal to hypotenuse multiplied by sine of that angle and for cos theta cos of that angle it can be obtained by taking adjacent divided by the hypotenuse and therefore if you make adjacent the subject you can obtain adjacent by multiplying hypotenuse by cos of that angle so let's continue let's start with this side this side is directly opposite to the side an opposite can be obtained by multiplying the hypotenuse and the sine of that angle. The hypotenuse is 1. Multiply by sine of that angle. One time that sine will still be the sine of that angle. So this is sine of A plus B. Let us move to this direction. This side is adjacent to this angle. An adjacent can be obtained by multiplying the hypotenuse with the cos of that angle. Hypotenuse is already 1 multiplied by cos of that angle. It will still be cos of that angle. Okay, let us find this side and this side. You can see that this length side is adjacent to angle B. Adjacent is hypotenuse multiplied by cos of that angle. The hypotenuse is 1 multiplied by cos of that angle. So this is going to be cos cos b this one is opposite to this angle opposite is hypotenuse multiplied by sine of that angle so one multiplied by sine of b we still have sine sine b here now let us find this side length this side length is adjacent to this angle a and adjacent can be obtained by multiplying the hypotenuse and cos of that angle 
cos of that angle you can see is cos A multiplied by cos B. So this becomes cos A then cos cos B. What about this side? This side is directly opposite to angle A. Opposite you can see is hypotenuse multiplied by sine of that angle. So sine of that angle, sine of A, they are multiplied by the hypotenuse which is cos, cos B. Let's move on. Let's find this side length. This side length is directly adjacent to angle A. Adjacent is hypotenuse multiplied by cos of that angle. So this is the hypotenuse sine B multiply by cos of that angle cos A. So we have cos A here. And last but not the least, you can see we have this side length, which is directly opposite to angle A. Opposite is hypotenuse multiplied by sine of that angle. So we have sine of that angle A multiplied by the hypotenuse, which is sine B. Now we have obtained the required information needed Remember in a rectangle, all opposite sides are equal. This means that sine of A plus B will be the sum of this opposite side. We have sine of A plus B equals sine, sine A cos B plus sine B cos A sine b cos cos a so to obtain double angle this is the right formula to use but what if a is equal to b if a is equal to b um, this becomes sine 2a equals if a is equal to b we have sine a cos a sine a cos a making two sine a cos cos a you can see one here you can see the other one here these two formulas are very essential now let us drive other ones this of other sides are equal so we can say that this plus this is equal to this so we have cos a plus b plus sine sine a sine b this is equal to cos A cos B, cos A cos, cos B. Uh, since we are interested in knowing the double angle, you can take this one to the right. So we have cos A plus B equals what we have there to the right, cos A cos B minus sine A sine sine b and if a is equal to b we can obtain another double angle here cos of 2a will be equal to if a is equal to b we have cos a multiplied by cos a cos squared a so we have cos squared a here minus sine squared a you can see another important formula here we have two of them. In case if the angles are different, you use this formula. But if the angles are the same, you use this other formula. We can still find some. Um, from Pythagoras rule, it says that hypotenuse squared, which is one squared is the same thing as one, is equal to opposite squared, which we have here as sine b squared, sine squared b, plus the adjacent squared which is cos squared b look at another identity which is very important uh, if you have cos squared an angle plus sine squared of the same angle the result will always be equal to one and from here we can derive other identities let us divide each time here by sine squared b so we have one divided by sine squared b equal to sine squared b divided by sine squared v 
plus cos squared b divided by sine squared b reciprocal of sine is cosecant because this is squared we have cosecant squared cosec squared b equal to sine squared b divided by sine squared b is one plus remember sine over cos is tan but cos over sine is cotangent but this time around we have cot squared b look at another identity driving from the initial one if we like we can divide each term by cos squared b to obtain another identity let us do that if we have this is important this is important if we have one divided by cos squared b equal to sine squared b divided by cos squared b plus cos squared b divided by cos squared b reciprocal of cos is sec so we have second squared b equals sine over cos is tan but this is squared we have tan squared b plus cos divided by cos is one look at another important identity we have driven one two three four five six seven let me see I, I can drive other ones from this one look at it here i can drive other ones from this one so let me take this diagram down because we don't need it anymore but let me use this face we have seen that sine squared b plus cos squared b is equal to one this implies that sine squared b is equal to one minus cos squared b let us substitute this information right here uh, where we have a here instead of b so i can write this one as a this is a as well let me substitute it here this becomes cos 2a equals we have uh, cos squared a minus instead of sine squared a we can now write it as 1 minus cos squared a if you expand this this becomes negative while this one becomes positive we have two similar terms or exact terms become two of them so we have cos of 2a equals 2 cos squared a minus 1 look at another identity driving from this one let me make cos squared a again the subject to find another identity you can see that cos squared a is equal to 1 minus sine squared a let us substitute this one into this one so that this becomes cos 2a equals now instead of cos squared a we can now write it as 1 minus sine squared a the minus sine squared a this is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared a this is another identity we can drive so many of them uh, this is important this is also very important let me see if we can drive another one yes we can drive another one but still in this one because from here we may decide to make cos squared theta the subject we can have it as cos squared a equal to 1 plus cos of 2a divided by 2 this is also very important especially while performing integration that needs substitution you can always substitute cos squared a with this one because this is so easy to integrate compared to this so this is also very important let me switch one again there are so many but let me stop here thank you for watching do share to your learning colleagues and don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel for more exciting videos bye bye